Hello and welcome to Advanced Pro University. Today we're going to be talking about the Advanced Pro Inventory mobile app for Android. So let's go ahead and begin. We're going to go ahead and click into the app. And at this point, it's going to have us put in some information about your Advanced Pro server. This might be a local or cloud server. You're going to have a URL, which will likely be an IP address, and a security key. Let me go ahead and enter mine. So a couple of things to note about this service URL and security key. First off, uh, HTTP colon slash slash is required. You may be using a server that is using HTTPS, which is a more secure way to do this. Uh, you'll also notice that at the end of that normal four piece IP address, if you're familiar with IP addresses, we also have a port number and by default that port number is 81. Uh, you may be doing some port forwarding depending on your setup. Keep that in mind. Uh, in general, we will be providing you with your service URL and security key when you are set up to work with Advanced Pro Mobile. Let's go ahead and submit. And choose your username and password. Let's talk about where that gets configured. So we're now over here in Advanced Pro. We're going to come to Admin and site administrators. So as long as your AP mobile is configured, you're gonna see you'll have a number of users set up and certain users are gonna have a special role. That's an AP mobile user role. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that off. So you'll see that the role that we set was AP mobile user. We've set a default warehouse and you'll also see that there's these AP mobile user checkboxes. Now what this is gonna allow us to do is go into the AP mobile settings. And we'll see, these are actually the permissions that we're able to give this user in AP Mobile. These are a different user from your standard Advanced Pro users, and they need to be configured separately. Now, you'll see that we have the inbound, the outbound, which is receiving and, and picking and packing, respectively. There's the warehouse operations, which include being able to make transfers, being able to do cycle counts, as well as lookup, and uh, there is some settings here for verifying lot, which is used in certain special workflows. And we'll also see preferences. So for inbound and outbound orders, we'll be able to set the preferences for this user about what they're seeing and how they're seeing it as they're dealing with inbound and outbound orders and how these items and orders are ordered within the within the order itself. So you'll be able to see the items. It essentially decides whether it's going to go by picking location, whether it's going to go alphabetically. You have a few options there. If we click on manage warehouses, we can enable or disable certain warehouses within our company for this user to be able to access. So if they're working just in one warehouse, you're going to be able to stick them just in that warehouse. So they'll only be, to do, be able to do business in that warehouse or in the warehouses that they have access to. So let's go ahead and back out, and let's go back over to AT AP Mobile, and let's continue our tour. So now we are here, we're ready to log in. I happen to have created a login. Ooh, let's not reset the server. You'll see this gear down in the bottom. Uh, we can use that to reset our server information. So if there's ever any issues, you're going to be able to see that as to reset the server information. We're going to come into username, and I'm going to go ahead and type in mobile1. And our password. And we'll log in. Ooh. Make sure my password is correct. There we go. So at this point we are now in our main menu. So we're able to click the mobile one user to be able to sign out. We're also able to click the warehouse and this allows us to choose to work in a different warehouse. From the perspective of AP Mobile you, always work, you are always working in a warehouse. So I want you to be aware of that. Now, we're going to talk about outbound orders. We're going to talk about some inbound orders. We're going to talk about warehouse operations, and we're going to talk about lookup. We're going to start with lookup. So lookup allows us to scan either a SKU, a UPC, a serial number, a picking location, or a lot, and find out some information about it. So let's look at a SKU. So I've just entered a portion of a SKU, and it's showing me all of the SKUs that match that portion of a SKU that I put in. So for uh, the first one, it, we can see that it just occurs in one picking location, TB1, and that we have a certain amount available there. 
Now, for the second one here, we can see that we have one unit in a location called installer, and now we have another unit sitting in a location called TB2. And you'll notice that we have the picking location quantity and the available quantity. So here you can see there's a difference of two. That means two of these items are sitting on reserve within Advanced Pro itself. They've been sold, but they've not yet been shipped, or they've been committed to a manufacturing process that has not yet finished. So that's lookup, and we can do this by picking location to see all the items that are in a specific picking location. Again, we can do it by lot to see all the items that have that lot. That way you can start to get an idea of what's going on in your warehouse using our app. Now let's talk about an, an inbound order. Let's receive some product. So here uh, we're immediately taken to the area where we uh, can look at what's expected today. And uh, I'm actually going to enter uh, our filters here. We're going to go to look at a different order to receive. So we're, we were looking at just what's expected to receive today. We can go to the To Receive menu to see things that have been received or partially received in the past, as well as anything that's still pending. So at this point, we can enter a specific order, and we can start to receive against it. There's a couple of behaviors that I want to talk about here, uh, and we'll, let's go through them. So the first option is what we call unlocked, scanning unlocked. So what that means is I can scan any SKU or UPC using this field up at the top, or I can tap any one of these fields on the dark blue square to go ahead and enter those orders. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and tap on the first one, and it brings up a little pop-up. So this pop-up allows me to choose my picking location, and I can receive into any location that is currently associated with this product. It also allows me to enter a lot or a serial number, and if we're not working with lot or serial numbers, we can just turn, them, turn those fields off by locking them off. And we can enter the quantity. So I could enter 1 and we would receive 1. I could enter 10 and receive 10. This is a really good workflow if you want to receive things. You don't necessarily want to scan every box. You maybe want to scan or tap the item once and then enter the quantity of items you're ordering makes uh, maybe a little bit more sense if you're receiving very large numbers of product. Now I'm going to go ahead and close that. Uh, so that can work by scanning, the, again, the SKU or the UPC, or by tapping the item. Now if I lock, this changes the behavior radically, and, and that lock is going to stick with you uh, as you're using the system. So it kind of assumes that you want to use it one way or another. Now if we do not have lot or serial numbers for our product, it won't bring up that pop-up at all. It'll assume that you're receiving into your default locations, and it tells you what they are, and it assumes that you're going to scan each and every unit. So if I tap or scan to match right now, you'll see that my count just went up by one automatically. So this is much better if you want to be scanning every item as you receive it. So you'll see here now I'm, I'm scanning each one, and in a split second we have our, our count raised appropriately. Now we can partially receive this order right now or we could fully receive if we wanted to scan every single item. I'm going to partially receive at some point. I'm going to get say 10 of this second SKU on our order and we can go ahead and partially receive. So I'm going to do that by clicking the complete the order button up at the top. And just like in Advanced Pro, we do have to enter a bill or a reference number. I'm just going to go ahead and enter a random number because this is just a demonstration. Uh, but you could go ahead, if you've been provided with a barcode on your bill of lading, go ahead and scan that bill of lading barcode number. I'm going to go ahead and complete that. So that's going to become our bill number in Advance Pro. So this, is, this requires you to have had a purchase order placed in Advance Pro. These must be at the to receive stage. And when you're finished, just like when you work in Advance Pro, it creates a bill in Advance Pro that reflects what you received. Now we're going to come into our menu. We're going to go back out to the main menu. And we're going to come to inbound. Oh, sorry, we're going to come to outbound orders. There we are. Outbound orders. So here we have a number of outbound orders that we can easily pick uh, to go ahead and begin the shipping process. So again, we need to have a customer sales order placed and processed. We need to have something in the two pick stage to look at this. If it's in the two pack stage, we can go to the pack item here on the menu to look at what's there to pack. 
And AP Mobile exclusively does picking and packing. So this way, if you're going to get everything off the shelf and manage that process, that's fine. At the end of the day in Advanced Pro, you're going to either need to bulk ship or uh, you can go ahead and push those shipments over to your UPS uh, options uh, or FedEx or uh, USPS through Indicia. So you have these options that you can integrate with and you can enter things like your tracking number that can all be done through Advanced Pro Desktop. So this will not fully ship because you're likely going to need to go ahead and print off some documents as part of shipping but it certainly will help you with picking and packing and making sure that your orders are accurate working with scanning. So we're going to go ahead and open up an order. Now it's very, very similar to receiving. It's going to tell us our picking location, and if we're working unlocked, it'll bring up that pop-up again. Now this time, instead of giving us the option of locking lot and serial off, it looks at whether or not we've got lot or serial numbers for this item, and it will require them if we do. If we don't, it won't require them. So here I can go ahead and enter my quantity if I'm just shipping them out. That's just a little bit about uh, the unlocked way to scan. Now if I lock this, I can tap it, and it will just pick the item. And we can complete the order. It now gives us the option to just pick or to pick and pack. Uh, so if we just pick, it'll move forward to the pack stage. If we pick and pack, it will move forward to the shipping stage. So that gives us... Uh, a little bit of a glimpse about what picking is like within AP Mobile. Now the next area we're going to go to is Warehouse. Warehouse actually has three operations inside of it. So we have a transfer area. This is used for transferring between picking locations or between warehouses. It is the equivalent of a direct transfer. So if you're looking for an indirect transfer where you pick and in one warehouse and then you receive it in the other, you are going to have to use Advanced Pro Desktop for that. But we are going to review these options. So we've got the picking location from, the warehouse to, the picking location to, the reason and the quantity uh, and the, the product. And, and when we're looking at the product, we can choose whether we're going to transfer based on the SKU, the UPC, the serial number, the lot or the batch. Uh, so just to sum this up in, in kind of concrete terms, what you're going to do is you're going to walk over, let's say we're doing picking locations, we're going to walk over to location one, the place where we're going to get the product from, we're going to scan it. We're going to, and you can lock these fields as well. So if you're always working within warehouse one, we can lock that. Uh, so you, you're going to pick up your, your from location, you're going to scan it. You're going to walk over to the to location, you're going to scan it, or you're going to choose it from this list. Okay? And now you're going to scan your products. And if you're working with more than one product, you can lock all of your from and to location information. Okay? Uh, you can also put in a reason, and you can lock that reason if you're doing a bunch of, of kind of batch work. So then you can go ahead and scan the product, or the SKU, the UPC, or the serial, and Advanced Pro Mobile is going to be able to uh, use that uh, SKU to know what product is being transferred from this location and to that location. So it's very much around this idea that you're going to go ahead and pick up the product in one location, drop it off in another, and you're scanning as you're delivering it into its destination, okay? But it is an immediate process. There aren't stages to this. Okay, so the next area we're going to touch on is cycle counting. Cycle counts can be created in Advance Pro or here in AP Mobile, and they are essentially ways to check a subsection of stock. In AP Mobile, it does have to be by picking location. And what we can do is we'll go ahead and set up uh, a cycle count. So we've got a date. We do have to give it a name. We'll call it count. And here we assign a picker. In this case, it's mobile one. Uh, we'll assign the warehouse and we'll assign a picking location. Uh, everything in CA1. Let's see what's in CA1. So here's all of the items that are in CA1. And you can see there's a lot. So we can check off the items that we want to count. Or at the bottom, you'll see, uh, we can just go ahead and start that cycle count. There we are. So it's created. Now, we could have also saved it and come to it later as well. Here we go. So now we can go ahead and count our t-shirts in this case that we've checked off. And I can go ahead and find out what our quantity is. So here I can tap each one. I can enter the correct count. And I can put in a comment if it's a different. So here we've got 4,023 t-shirts sitting here for the large red t-shirts. And I could say, no, there's actually 4,024. 
and I could put a comment. We found one behind the box, so now that's in the count. There it is. Uh, so that's one way that we could do this. Now this does still go for approval in Advanced Pro Desktop. So a supervisor is going to see something submitted through AP Mobile and approve it before it gets applied to stock. In the meantime, items that are in the midst of undergoing counts are locked. So the last area I want to touch on today is adjustments. Let's go into adjustments. So adjustments are the equivalent of the multiple adjustment field that you'll see within Advanced Pro under manage inventory. It's a button in the lower right on that screen. Essentially we can do a positive or negative adjustment. This is designed around tracking items that we might not necessarily be purchasing or selling. So we can go ahead and put the SKU or UPC in. We can enter the location that we're pulling from or adding to. If we're working with a lot number we can put in that lot number. If we're working at the serial number we can put in that serial number. If you don't work with either of those you can lock them off. You can put in the quantity. Right now it says we could only pull 2,000 uh, for this particular item, uh, whichever item it's locking to, or the last item used in this case. And we'll get the quantity and we'll get the reason in. And then we can either add or remove those items from AP Mobile and from your Advanced Pro database. Now one thing about AP Mobile is it does rely on an open internet connection either through Wi-Fi wi -Fi, like I am right now or through uh, a 3G or LTE connection. You must have a live connection to your Advanced Pro database. Uh, and if you're working with Wi-Fi, you want to make sure that you have a strong signal and a good modern router that's going to give you good speeds with your server. Uh, there, if you go offline, unfortunately, you won't be able to contact your Advanced Pro server. And as a result, you won't be able to use AP Mobile. This does rely on a live link with your server. So that concludes our general tour of AP Mobile today. Thank you all very much for watching and have a great day.